Quentin Tarantino has created some of the most memorable stories and characters of the last 20 years. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? So when do we do this? It all depends. When do you want to die? We're going to be doing one thing, one thing only, killing Nazis. In honor of his new Western, we do a retrospective and a preview review of Django Unchained. Hi, I'm Aaron. I'm also Aaron. Salim. And we're here today to discuss one of my favorite directors, Quentin Tarantino. We're going to do a retrospective on all of his works, and we're also going to talk about Django Unchained. Yes. We have not just seen it, but we will be seeing it soon. Mm -hmm. Aaron, why don't you start us off? Thank you, Aaron. You're welcome, Aaron. So we're going to talk about our favorite Quentin Tarantino movies. Jackie Brown is the movie I kind of recognize yes. as my right. favorite. Solid. It's and it's, solid. it's because I think it's kind of the undervalued Tarantino movie. It came out after Pulp Fiction. Jackie Brown stars Robert De Niro, Robert Forrester, Samuel L. Jackson, Bridget Fonda, Chris Tucker, and of course, Pam Greer in the lead as Jackie Brown. Yeah. What I really like about Jackie Brown is it has like a full hour devoted to just setting up these characters before you even get to the whole caper story aspect of the film. And you're just comfortable watching it. You have all the, di the dialogue. It's been adapted from Elmore Leonard's novel, Rum Punch. And you see, you see his obvious influences because it's his novel, but you see Tarantino, the way he brought in his dialogue and his flavor. I saw an opportunity to walk away with a shopping bag full of money, would I take it? You know where it came from. It's not like it's somebody's life savings. It wouldn't even be missed. Half a million dollars will always be missed. It's a good story, and I love how it plays out. And Pam Greer in the lead, she's just such a confident lead, such a plays very cool. She has a great authority about her, so she's able to stand up to somebody like Samuel L. Jackson in that role. I think it actually has some really interesting, like, shock moments that you really aren't expecting. Well, and it's, it's his black exploitation film, isn't it? I mean, from what yeah, I, I mean, understand. It, it, yeah, you know, and, you know if he, any, any genre <laughs> film that Quentin does never ends up being that genre. Exactly. It just ends up being a Quentin film. But, you know, everything that he does and directs is a version of a movie that he loves or that he He's seen before. He more or less lived inside of a video store. So it was his film school. Exactly. So what's your favorite? My favorite film uh, actually is two. It's mm -hmm. Kill Bill 1 and 2. And I consider it one because mm -hmm. when the movie was first made and first screened, it was screened at Con, mm -hmm. and it was one film. I actually got to see the Con cut of Kill Bill at the New Beverly, which is a movie theater that Quentin purchased that is in Los Angeles. And it is sort of weird to have the juxtaposition of uber violence in the first half and then nothing but characters and dialogue and mm -hmm. very serious moments in the second half. But I love it. I think it works. Yeah. I, I love the, the the first film because of how stylized it is mm -hmm. and that there's, a, you know, the second part, which is, for me, the, the better film, but the first one was just fun. <laughs> The best moments of the entire film are in the second half, I will mm -hmm. agree with you. I mean, my favorite scene of any Quentin film ever is, is the, the coffin. <laughs> The music is so perfect, and I bow down to the man for knowing that that song would be perfect for the scene of his movie mm -hmm. when that song was perfect for a mm -hmm. scene in a movie 30 years prior. All right, I've talked your ear off. <laughs> Tell me your favorite movie, Salim. Pulp Fiction. I, I feel like it, this movie has such emotional resonance for our generation. The dialogue is, is I think, something to be studied. You know, I'm a screenwriter, and it, it's not easy to be able to write dialogue like that. It's so naturalistic. You know, these, these people seem like they're real people. We're not gonna do anything stupid, are we? Don't you hurt him! Nobody's gonna hurt anybody. We're all gonna be like three little Fonzies here. And what's Fonzie like? Come on, Yolanda, what's Fonzie like? It's cool. What? Cool. Correct the mundo. And that's what we're gonna be. We're gonna be cool. Every movie he does is a version of a genre that he enjoys. And Pulp Fiction is a version of a gangster picture. But not just that, it's also a version of how he sees life. Quinn Tarantino has many, many different characters, so let's talk about some of our favorites. My favorite has to be Jules from Pulp Fiction. Quinn Tarantino has basically said that Sam Jackson is the only person that does his dialogue justice, and he has some of the best quotable lines. You are aware that there's an invention called television, and on this invention they show shows, right? Yeah. There's a, 
a laundry list worth of characters. I mean, yeah, Jules from Pulp Fiction is one of mine, Stuntman Mike from mm -hmm. Death Proof, Max Cherry and Jackie Brown. But Mr. Blonde and Reservoir Dogs, the way Michael Madsen's able to play that and be both very cool, but also incredibly sinister, mainly from what we've been told. We don't really see him do that much violence besides mm -hmm. the torture scene in that movie, but you're being told that he's this psycho killer guy. But you see Michael Madsen walk into frame and suddenly he's like the coolest guy in the room. And it works so well in terms of what Tarantino brings to his films. You have a mix of a person that's involved in murderous activities, but he's incredibly cool and laid back and slick with his dialogue. <clears throat> are you going to bark all day, little doggy? Or are you going to bite? My other favorite character, Hans Landa, from, mm -hmm. played by Christoph Wal Oscar winning Christoph Waltz in Inglorious Pastors. <laughs> Don't you dare forget that. <laughs> yeah, <right? laughs> he's doing a lot of the same things other Quentin Tarantino characters do, but he's doing it in four different languages, and yeah. it's very impressive. The way his character is written, he's very he's the Jew hunter, but he's also <laughs> professional and polite about things, even though he's a scary guy. Yeah, oh, that, I, I love that film, and he's one of my favorite characters, too. Toyora Aldo the Apache. So you're the Jew hunter. Do you control the nicknames your enemies bestow on you? Aldo the Apache and the little man? What do you mean, the little man? German's nickname for you. The German's nickname for me is the little man? Well, now I think it's time for us to just start our discussion about Django Unchained. Mm -hmm. We've got some veteran actors uh, from Quentin Tarantino films like Samuel L. Jackson and then Christoph Waltz is coming back, but we also have a lot of new people. Jamie Foxx, Leonardo DiCaprio. It centers around Christoph Waltz's character of uh, Dr. Schultz. Django is a slave, and he's breaking him out of slavery to help him find these people called the Brittle Brothers. Mm -hmm. In exchange for Django helping mm -hmm. Christoph Waltz's character, Christoph Waltz will take him to his wife. That's all we know so far, it's but a, it's, a, it's, certainly it's, it's a revenge slave movie. Yeah. So it's going to be awesome. Django. The D is silent. Yeah, I'll be uh, curious how Django Unchained does because it comes out on Christmas Day and it's a hard R-rated film when there's a lot more family-friendly fare out in theaters at that time as well. Oh I God, do I go to do I go to Django or do I go to Les Mis? Yeah. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I really look forward to seeing how Quentin Tarantino really feels about slavery. See it. Yeah, it's an event when a new Tarantino film comes out, and I can't wait. So I'm going to definitely go and see it. I agree with both of you. Plus, the D is silent. How can you not see it? <laughs> Indeed. Cheers. Cheers, mates. That's a bingo. Mm -hmm. To 20 more years of Quentin. What do they look like, Jimmy? Dorks. <laughs> they look like a couple of dorks. It was dialogue. It's certainly not hard to have a favorite character in every single one of these films. Yeah. 